Hi everyone, my name is Daniel, and I am an instructor of Scala Anaka at Rocket GNU. And in this talk, I'm going to type, talk about um, type level programming in Scala. In particular, I'm going to talk about type level arithmetic. The goal of this talk is to show you how to operate on types at compile time. Consider types as numbers and make the compiler infer relationships between those types of words. And I would like to show the power of Scala's type system and implicit resolution mechanism to the point where we can force the Scala compiler to solve constraint satisfaction problems for us, which is quite amazing. So as prerequisites for this talk, um, I'm going to assume most of you are, uh, all of you are familiar with uh, Scala implicits because I'm going to heavily rely on implicits. I'm going to use some type aliases and a little bit of math. Now, uh, I, will, I do work at Palantir, but my work on Scala and my teaching uh, work is completely unrelated to my work at Palantir, just uh, to keep things clear. So, I want to work with types as numbers, or numbers as types. So, I'm defining all natural numbers, not by defining all of them one by one, because I cannot possibly exhaust all the natural numbers but rather I will define the natural numbers in terms of their succession. So I'm going to define something like this. I'm going to define a trait that I denoted natural. I uh, created a small uh, class called zero and a class called successor. And by defining the number zero and successor, I basically define all the natural numbers because uh, any number is the successor of some other number. And I'm defining some type aliases here so that I have something to work on uh, as concrete types. I'm going to show you uh, some uh, demo after the presentation. Cool. So I want to do three basic things with these types. First off, I want to be able to compare natural numbers, and then I want to be able to do uh, addition and sub subtraction between these integer numbers considered as types. There is more. There is a wide variety of things that I can do with them, like multiplication, put them in a list, magically sort them. Uh, but I'm going to constrain this presentation to 20 minutes. So because we're operating on types, not on regular values, we would like to compare numbers as a type. So I'm defining a, a small class that I magically denoted less than because the Scala naming system allows us to do that. And by that, I'm denoting the type of the less than relationship between two natural, natural numbers expressed as so if I say less than 0 and 1, that's a type, not an expression. And I can also write an infix because the Scala naming system allows us to. So I am going to define the less than relationships in terms of the axioms, the mathematical axioms of less than, which are the fact that 0 is less than the successor of any number, because the 0 is, the zero is the smallest natural number, and if A is less than B, then the successor A is less than successor B, which makes sense. If B is less than 4, then 4 is less than 5, and so on and so forth. So I'm basically defining the relationship between any natural number. So I'm, I can define uh, that less than relationship throughout the entire set of natural numbers. So if I say something like that, like number 2 is less than number 4, the compiler should figure it out if the type less than with types 2 and 4 exists. So the compiler should run uh, an inference mechanism that would sound like this. 2 less than 4 is the same as successor 1 less than successor 3, because that's how I define them. Does the first axiom work? Well, no it doesn't, because the first axiom says 0 is less than something else. Well, I don't have 0 on my left hand side, so I would like to choose the second axiom. Successor 1 is less than successor 3, which is 2 less than 4, only if 1 is less than 3. Then the compiler can iterate on that. This is the same as successor 0 or less than successor 2. Does the first axiom work? Well, no, because the left-hand side is not 0. The second axiom says successor 0 or less than successor 2, or 1 less than 3, only if 0 is less than 2. Well, does the first axiom work in this case? Well, yes, it does, because I have 0 on my left-hand side. So 0 less than 2 exists as a type that is the relationship between 0 less than 2 is true, so to speak, at a type level. So 1 is less than 3, so 2 is less than 4, and the type is fine. So 2 less than 4, I repeat, that's a type, not an expression. So 
We want to make the compiler figure it out if, the, if such a type exists through implicits. So I would like to suggest a new way of reading implicits in Scala as a way of validating the existence of a type. So here's how it goes. I'm defining an implicit method which takes a type argument in the form of a natural and returns an instance of a less than between zero and the successor of that number, which basically validates the less than relationship between zero and successor of any number. So read this implicit method as for every natural number, zero is less than the successor of that number, which is the basic axiom. The inductive axiom says that for every two natural numbers, if there is an evidence of a is less than b, then the compiler will build an instance of successor a less than successor b. So you can read this implicit method as for every type a and b derived from natural, so for every two natural numbers, if there is an instance of a less than b, then the compiler will build me an instance of successor a less than successor b. And so I'm forcing the compiler to check the validation or the existence of a less than relationship between types. So given I've defined these two implicit methods, I'm going to pack them in the companion object of that less than class. Does that make sense so far? All right. Now, the way that these implicits work are basically the fact that the compiler can build these implicit values for us and thus validate the existence of a type. And for that, I'm going to expand a little bit and make the compiler actually construct a type with abstract type arguments. What do I mean by that? So I am defining a trait that I denote it plus, which takes two generic type arguments, A and B, both natural, so to speak. And I'm storing the result of that addition between numbers as an abstract type. So read this trait as an addition operation between two numbers in which the result is stored as an abstract type. And I'm defining an auxiliary type that I call it add, which takes three generic type arguments, the operands A and B, and the result R, which is the same as plus of A and B in which the uh, result is stored as a type number. So if someone gives me an instance of that add auxiliary type, I'll treat it as a plus and store the abstract type number as the generic argument, because we'll need this later. And here's how it works. So the addition between natural numbers is based on axioms as well. So the axioms, the mathematical axioms of adding two natural numbers are just two basic ones. Adding zero to any natural number gives me that same number. And if I add A and B, I'm going to show you that uh, in just a second. I don't want to put you to put too many axioms. So if I add zero to any number, then I get back that same number. And I'm writing that as an implicit method. So for any type argument there that I'm defining as natural, then the compiler will build me an instance of an addition between zero and that number. So for every natural number, there is an instance of an add operation with zero and that number. Axiom two of adding two numbers is an inductive axiom. So for every two type, generic type arguments A and B, if there is an evidence of an addition between A and B, then the compiler can build an instance of an add operation on the successor of A and B, where the result of, is the successor of that evidence. So if I have A plus B, so if the compiler somehow knows that there is an instance of A plus B, then the compiler can also build A plus B plus one, so to speak, in which the result is stored here as the successor of A and B, so to speak. Now, I'm also going to define a small apply method that brings an evidence to the surface. So if the compiler can find an evidence of A plus B, I'm just going to surface that up. And I'm defining in my main application, I'm going to define a small show method which uh, fetches a type tag and brings it to the console. So if I call the show method on plus of two and three, so if I uh, make the compiler build me an instance, an automatic implicit instance of two plus three, then I get a type tag in, in which the result abstract type number is Successor, 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 zero, which is automatically computed by compiler, or the number five. This is pretty magical. So here's how it works. If I do two plus three, then 
the compiler will ask itself, is there an implicit value of 2 plus 3? Well, I need to bring up my implicit diffs to uh, figure out if I can build them, if the compiler can build them. Well, the first axiom doesn't work because the first type number is 0. So I cannot do that. I'm going to rely on that second axiom. So I'm going to say that because the number 2 is the successor of 1, the compiler can look further into this second implicit inductive evidence. So I'm going to look for an instance of 1 plus 3 instead of 2 plus 3. So the compiler will go again. Is there an implicit value of 1 plus 3? Well, let me bring the axioms into scope. Well, again, the first axiom will not work, and the compiler will ask, well, 1 is the successor of 0, so maybe I can look further into an evidence of 0 plus 3 in this case. So is there an implicit value of 0 plus 3? Well, let me bring the axioms in, into scope again. And in this case, the first axiom works because there is an implicit plus of 0 and 3. So if I have an implicit of 0 and 3 whose result is the number 3, then the compiler can then build back the result of 2 plus 3, which I originally asked it for. So I can also build an implicit value of type successor of 0 plus 3, in which the result is the successor of the previous operation. And then I can, given the fact that I have an implicit evidence of 1 plus 3, I can also build an implicit value of 2 plus 3, building on that same inductive axiom. So the result is the successor of the previous operation, in which case we have the successor of successor of 3. So if I print something like that, this is the successor of successor of 3, which is 5. Does that make sense so far? All right. So this is the kind of type level arithmetic that I'm talking about. We make the compiler figure out, validate the existence of a type at compile time. Now, just as an exercise, let's try to think about subtracting numbers. This is very similar, but this talk is mostly about suggesting a new way of seeing Scala implicits as evidence of types. So just for the sake of example, I'm considering the subtraction of numbers as a trait called minus, which takes two natural type arguments and stores the result as an abstract type argument. So this is the subtraction of two numbers in which the result is stored as an abstract type. And I'm defining an auxiliary type, which takes three type arguments, two naturals, and a result in which the abstract type number is stored. Good. We'll need this later, of course, because the subtraction of numbers is also based on axioms. So there are also two axioms on subtraction. The first is that if I subtract 0 from a number, I get the same number, which I'm defining as an implicit method. So for any natural number, there is an instance of a subtraction of a and 0. And the result is that same number. So the compiler can build me, automatically build me an instance of a subtract operation for any natural type in which the result is that same number. So a minus 0 is basically the same number. And the inductive um, axiom looks something like this. Quite a mouthful, but it's very similar to the add operation. So for any two, nap for any two type arguments, if there is an evidence of a minus b, then the compiler can also build me an evidence of successor A minus successor B, in which the type, I've actually made a mistake here, the type out is the same as the previous operation. So in essence, what I'm saying is that if I have an instance of A minus B, I can also build an instance of A plus 1 minus B plus 1, and the result is the same. Does that make sense? But I've made a mistake. So the type out is the same as the evidence result. So for any two numbers a and b, if the compiler can find an instance of a subtract operation of a and b, so a minus b, then the compiler can also build me an instance of a plus 1 minus b plus 1, and it will store the same result in its abstract type now. Um, sure. Can we go back to previous uh, To double check, is it mistake uh, having plus sign? New plus uh, success. Oh, this guy. Yeah, uh, I made a mistake. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Um, so yeah, we have a minus here, and the type out is evidence result. So the same type as the previous operation. Now, uh, I'm also packing an apply method to the companion object of plus, just so the, the compiler can uh, show that up to me. And if I do a show 
if I try to print the type tag of this type of minus with five and two, I get something like this with successor, 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 zero, or the number three. Now, in the same style, the compiler tries to figure out if there is an instance of five minus two. So it'll bring the axioms into scope, the implicit depths. The first axiom doesn't work because the number two over there, the second type number, is not zero. So it will try to look further for an evidence of four minus one. So is there an implicit value of four minus one? Let me bring my axioms into scope. The first axiom doesn't work because I'm not subtracting zero, I'm subtracting something else. So I know that number four is successor of three and one is successor of zero. So I'm looking for an implicit evidence of three minus zero in that case. Then bringing my axioms into scope, the compiler can build me an instance of three minus zero by the basic axiom. So this guy is good. So the compiler can build me an instance of three minus zero. The result is three. So it can build back an instance of five minus two. So given I have an evidence of three minus zero, I can also build a success, uh, an implicit value of successor three minus successor zero. So four minus one. So I'm doing this guy. I'm sorry about that. I copied the, um, the code. But we have minus here and the type out is the same as evidence result. So basically three minus one is the same, four minus one is the same as three minus zero and its result is still three. And just in the same style, because I have four minus one, the compiler can build me five minus two by the same inductive axiom. So, and the result is still three. So the compiler can build me an instance of five minus two and the result is three. Now, if I try to do if I try to print the type tag of 2 minus 5, because we can also ask the question, is there an instance of 2 minus 5? Well, the compiler is smart enough that it cannot find an evidence of 2 minus 5, because uh, it will try to apply the inductive axiom twice, and then it will find 0 minus 3, and there is no such thing. So the compiler is able to validate at compile time whether the natural subtraction of 2 minus 5 is valid at all. This call compiler is a pretty damn awesome thing. Now, just to keep the presentation constrained to 20 minutes, I'm going to stop here. Um, I can also show you multiplication. I can also show you how to insert numbers into high-level lists, how to magically sort those lists uh, in a merge sort fashion. and. Uh, uh, basically force the compiler to do constraint satisfaction problems for me. You can find me at rockthejvm.com. I teach this kind of stuff. I teach Scala at all those and Akka as well. So if you're, for those of you who are interested, you can uh, find out my work at rockthejvm.com. Now I'm open.